Hello boys and girls, welcome to another episode from Bible Corner. It's Christina here with you today and we're so glad you're able to join with us and we really hope you have a lovely time as you come and as we do our singing, as we have our memory verse and especially as we come to the story today, we hope that you enjoy it and that especially you learn a lot from God's word today. So we're going to start off our meeting by singing the chorus, we are travelling on the Hallelujah line on the good old gospel train. This is one of my favourite choruses, I love this one, we're going to sing it all together the best that you can, okay, so the words and the music be up on the screen for you to follow along with so we're traveling on the hallelujah line That was really good singing of that chorus and that chorus reminds us that we are we're all traveling and as Christians we're traveling on that road to heaven now we're going to come to our memory verse for today boys and girls and if you've got your Bibles with you at home I want you to go grab them or get them and our memory verse for today is found in the New Testament in one of the four Gospels so we've got the four Gospels we've got Matthew Mark Luke and John and our memory verse today is found in the book of John and if you turn up to John chapter 10 and if you look at verse 11 that is our memory verse for today now this verse includes one of the I am sayings of Christ now there's seven of these sayings where Christ tells us something about himself some of them are I am the bread of life and the one we're going to be looking at today is I am the good shepherd and in this verse in John chapter 10 verse 11 we read the words I am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep I am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So like we say, these are the sayings of Christ. So the person who's speaking here in this verse is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is saying, I am the good shepherd. And he is reminding us here through the picture of a shepherd. And if any of you have sheep, you know what, how important a shepherd is and what a job a shepherd has, looking after and caring for the sheep. And in the same way, as Christians, Christ is our God good shepherd and we're told here in the rest of that verse that he giveth his life for the sheep and indeed the Lord Jesus Christ did give his life he died on the cross for his sheep so that we so that you and I can be saved from our sins he was willing to die on the cross so we can be saved and just in the same way like a shepherd is willing to give his life to save a sheep from perhaps something that might want to come and attack the sheep in the same way the Lord Jesus Christ he did he gave his life so that the sheep so that we as Christians can be saved so boys and girls we're going to try to learn this verse all together so we're going to say it through a couple of times each times each and then we're going to take out a few words we're going to say it all together after two with the Bible says one two the Bible says in John chapter 10 verse 11 I am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep all right, that wasn't too bad. Some of you might know this verse already, but I still want you to try your very best as we try to learn it, okay? So again, as best as you can, after two, one, two. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Well done, that wasn't too bad. Okay, let's have another wee test at it. We'll see how we got on. We'll take away a few words, all right? So I want you to see how well you can remember the words we've left out. Okay, so after two, try your very best. One, 
to. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 11, I am the good, the good giveth his life for the well done, did you get them all? So those two, three words we left out there were, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. As we be a bit too easy, okay, we'll do it a wee bit different this time, okay, just one more time. We'll leave out a few more words, all right. So after two, one, two. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 11, I am the shepherd, the good giveth his for the well done, did you get all those? Good job if you did, give yourselves a good pat on the back for that one. So again, the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Now I want you to remember that memory verse, especially for our story we're going to be looking at today. We're going to be looking all about sheep and all about shepherds in our story today. So I want you to remember that memory verse, keep it in your head and most importantly, keep it in your heart. And if you're not saved, listening in and you're not saved yet, you remember that Christ, he gave his life for you so that you can be saved. And all you have to do, boys and girls, is come and ask him into your heart to take away your sins. Okay, before we come to our story now, boys and girls, we're going to come to our second chorus for today. Now, we sang this chorus a few weeks back, and it was maybe a new chorus to some of you, but I thought, again, we would try to sing it again this week, and it really ties in with our story, so I thought, why not? We're going to sing that chorus, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, what a wonderful saviour, and it talks in there about how he is the good shepherd who guides the sheep. So we're going to sing that chorus together. Hopefully you remember it from the last time we were singing it, and I want you to try your very best with this one, Jesus saves, Jesus saves saves. What a wonderful saviour. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, what a wonderful saviour. He's the way to the light. He will keep you singing and if you remembered that from last time that was really good and hopefully maybe you'll sing that a few more times again and it'll get it really into your heads. Okay we're now going to come to our story boys and girls but before we do that we're of course going to do something really important we're going to come and pray first and now of course you know by now our drill for prayer we got our A, B, C you could tell it to me but A we're going to fold our arms, B we're going to bow our heads and C we're going to close our eyes and we're going to come and ask the Lord to help us as we come to our lesson today from God's word and we're going to come and pray now unto God. Let us pray. 
Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee, Lord, for even all we've learned today already, Lord. We thank thee, Lord, for that wonderful memory verse, how, Lord, it reminds us that you are that good shepherd and that you did, you gave your life for the sheep, you gave your life for us. And Lord, we do pray if there be anybody listening who still isn't saved, that they will realise that, Lord, and that they'll come and put their faith and trust in thee. Lord, help us now as we come to look at our lesson for today. Help us to listen and to learn. For your name's sake, we ask these things. Amen. So boys and girls, for our lesson today, we're not going to be really looking at a story. But instead, we're going to be looking at a passage from God's Word, one of the chapters in the Word of God. And if you have got your Bible, I would love for you to turn up to the passage we're going to be looking at today. Because today, we're going to be looking at probably one of the most famous Psalms in all of the Bible. And that is Psalm chapter 23, the 23rd Psalm. And it is often called the Shepherd's Psalm. And this psalm, Psalm chapter 23, was written by David. It's a psalm of David when he was still a shepherd and when he was out in the fields looking after the sheep. And maybe some of you listening in are shepherds. Maybe you've got sheep and you know how much time and how much work it takes to look after the sheep and make sure they are safe and well. And this is what David was talking about here all throughout this psalm, Psalm 23. I know maybe some of you listening in could actually recite Psalm 23 to me back, you know, off by heart. Heart. But you know, maybe you've always wondered what Psalm 23 is talking about and what it can teach us. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go through the Psalm. We've got some pictures to go with it too. We're going to go through the Psalm and we're going to go through it line by line and see what it's teaching us about as us as Christians and even those listening in who are not saved. And most importantly, what it teaches us about the Lord Jesus Christ as we've read here, as we've learned already today, because he is the Good Shepherd. Now, Psalm 23 starts off with those very famous words, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And we've already learned today how the shepherd and the Lord reminds us of the Lord Jesus Christ and about how he is that good shepherd. I know just like the sheep, has that shepherd there, that person there to look over them and to guide them and to keep them safe and to be with them. So too does a Christian. If you're listening in this morning and you're a Christian, you should know that the Lord is your shepherd. He is there for you. He is there to guide you and to look over you and to be with you. Just in the same way that the shepherd is always with his sheep, the Lord is always with you. But it's important here to notice that this is only for people who are Christians. The Lord is not a shepherd unto those who are not saved. The Lord is not your shepherd. But the thing is, you need to come and you need to ask him into your heart. Because like we learn in verse, he is the good shepherd. He gave his life for you. And you need to come, you need to ask him into your heart to take away your sins. And then he will be your shepherd. So we learn in the very first line there, the Lord is my shepherd. And in the same way, like we said, like the shepherd is there to look over and to guide and to be with the sheep. So the Lord is with us as Christians. Next part of that verse goes on in verse one, we read there, I shall not want. I know the shepherd is always there to make sure that the sheep have everything that they need. They have enough to eat, they've got enough to drink, they've got enough shade, even when it's very sunny outside, make sure there's enough shade for them to go and to lie under. He makes sure that there's a place for them to sleep in at night. He makes sure there's somewhere to go if it's snowy or rainy. He makes sure that um, they're safe and they're well. And the shepherd is always there and he makes sure that the sheep want nothing. And in the same way, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is there for us to make sure that we have want for nothing as well, that we have everything that we need. We've got our food, we've got our clothes, we've got our family, we've got our friends. We have all of these things. But you know, sometimes it even seems to us like we don't have enough. And is it always that way where we sometimes are like, oh, I wish I had more. I wish I had what that person had. I wish I had this, I wish I had that. You know, sheep can think like that too sometimes when they're in their field and they see another field a wee bit far, a wee bit away, and they see, they think, oh, the grass is so much greener looking in that field. And they break out and they go into that field, even though it's the same grass in both fields. And that's somehow, sometimes how sheep act. And that's sometimes how even we as Christians can act. We can think, oh, I wish I had what they had. But you know, God has given us all that we need and we really want nothing else. Well, that's just our, us being greedy and wanting stuff that we don't need. But God makes sure that we want for nothing, that we have all that we need. So we got there, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
Then in verse 2, we come on to the psalm. There's six verses in this psalm, so now in verse 2, it says there, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And you know, sheep only lie down when they are happy and when they are content and when they feel safe. So if you see a field full of sheep that are lying down, you know that they are happy, you know that they're full, they know that they are ha safe and that they are content. And they're chewing away their, their grass and they're as happy as anything. And you know, in the same way, Christ makes sure that we are happy and that we are safe. And you know, we should be content in him because like we said earlier, he has met all of our needs and we should be happy Christians. We shouldn't be sad Christians, we should be happy Christians. And we remember that all that God has done for us. And you know, the grass there, they talk about the green pastures. That reminds us of the word of God and about how we should be reading our Bibles. And just like the sheep chew over the grass, we should be chewing over our Bibles. We should be thinking on our Bibles and reading our Bibles. So he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That reminds us of sheep when they're lying down, they're happy, they're content. And as Christians, we should be happy and content Christians. Then the rest of that verse says, He leadeth me beside the still waters. And this reminds us of when the shepherd has to lead the sheep to water to be able to drink. I know the shepherd, he doesn't drive them and hit at them and shout at them. No, he leads them and the sheep follow him and follow his voice. And he leads them there beside the still waters. You know, sheep aren't, won't drink from anything that's rushing or any water that's going really fast. The water has to be still. And in the same way, God leads us to the still waters. No still waters reminds us of the love of Christ for us. I know when we think on God's love for us, we are happy and we are calm and we're able to take of that love and it fills us with happiness. I know the same way that the sheep go there and the water is still and calm and they're able to drink from the water. So where to go and we think upon the love of Christ for us and it should just fill us up with happiness when we think that Christ loved us so much that he died on the cross to take away our sins. So we're now on to verse three, we're getting there. So verse three, it says there, he restoreth my soul. And you know, that's a really important job that the shepherd has. He's there to make sure that the sheep don't get sick. And he does everything that he can to make sure the sheep are safe and healthy and well. And he will make sure that there's nothing lying about that the sheep might trip over. Sheep are quite um, clumsy animals. They might trip over very easily. So he makes sure there's nothing there to trip the sheep up. He makes sure that all of the things that might cause them harm is taken away. And he's always looking carefully to make sure that none of them are limping or none of them got any scratches or bruises or cuts or anything like that there. And if one of them does get sick what does he do does he just leave them leave them to get sick and more sick no he looks after them he takes them and he binds up any wounds he might have he runs, runs, rubs ointment on any cuts or grazes they might have or if they um, hurt their legs he binds them up and makes sure that they are safe and that they are healthy and he gives them medicine to help them you know in the same way, the Lord Jesus Christ is there to restore us. He restoreth my soul. When we talk about restoring something, that means you kind of fix it. If you've got a broken car, or if you've got a toy car, or something like that there, and you need to restore it, you bring it back um, to the way it was before. You fix it so it can work again. In the same way, the Lord is there to restore us when we sin against him. I know sin in the Bible is often described as a sickness or a disease. You know, even as Christians, we can sin against God. We still sin. And now I got saved, that was something I really struggled with because I was still sinning against God. Now it's not that I wanted to sin, but it was very easy to sin. And I used to think, well, does that mean I'm not saved anymore because I sinned against God? But you know, that's not what it is. Because as Christians, we do still sin. It doesn't mean we're not saved anymore, but we can sin against God. But when we do sin, we are to go back to him and tell him we're sorry for our sins. And he will restore us and bring him back onto ourself, himself and he will forgive our sins. So maybe you're a Christian and maybe that's something that you're worried about. You worry about the sin that you still do even after you're saved. Well, the Lord restores your soul too if you come and you ask him for forgiveness. So just in the same way that the shepherd is there to make sure that the sheep don't get sick and if they do get sick, he helps them. So the Lord is there to make sure even when we sin against him, if we come and ask him for forgiveness, he will forgive us. Now, the rest of that verse says, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. There's quite a lot of big words in that thing, in that phrase. But the paths of righteousness, that just means, righteousness means being the right way 
I know the shepherd. He will always make sure that the sheep are led in the right way on the good path. If he is leading them from one field to another field, he's not going to take them down a dangerous road where they might fall off or where the path is all uneven or it might be big um, rocks or stones that they can trip over or where there might be dangers all around. No, he leads them on a good path, a path that is even, a path that is good for them where there's no stones or no rocks to trip them up. He leads them on a good path. And in the same way, Christ, he will always lead us in the right way, the paths of righteousness, the right way. And he will lead us in a way that is right and good. And he will never lead us into sin. And that's why it's so important that we follow Christ. And we ask him every day, Christ, what would you have me to do today? Where do you want me to go? And we know just in the same way as the shepherd leads the sheep in the right way and the good way, Christ will always lead us in the right and good way. Okay, we're now on to verse four. We're getting there, we're nearly at the end. So the verse four tells us, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And you know the sheep, they fear no evil. They never worry when the shepherd is near, for they know he will protect them. And as our memory verse taught us today, as the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep, the sheep know that their shepherd will give their, his life for them, that he will always protect them. And you know, sometimes the sheep might have to be led down a dark valley where there's mountains on each side and it might be dark and it might be a bit scary, but for the sheep, they never fear because they always look at the shepherd and they always follow him. And you know, this verse here, this part of this verse is talking about death. I know death for many people is a scary thing and they don't like thinking about dying and they don't like thinking about death. And before I get saved, boys and girls, I was one of those people. I was petrified to go to sleep at night in case I wouldn't wake up the next morning, in case I died in my sleep because I knew where I would have went if I had died in my sleep. I would have went to hell. And that was so scary to me. And maybe you're listening in and maybe you're scared about that too. Maybe you know deep down that you're not saved. And that if you were to die, and I know it's not nice to think about, but if you were to die in your sin, you know that you would end up in hell. But you know, this verse tells us, the either walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I know as Christians, we should not be scared of death because we know that when we die, we will go to heaven to be with God forever, to be with our good shepherd forever. And that should hold no fear for us and we should not be scared of death. You know, maybe you're not saved. Maybe you do fear death. Well, when you come and you ask the Lord into your heart, that fear will disappear because you know that you're saved. You have your sins washed away. And no matter what happens, you will go to heaven and you'll be with God, your good shepherd forever. Now, the rest of that verse in verse four, it tells us, for thou art with me. And again, the shepherd's always with the sheep. He's with the sheep 24 seven. The shepherd in Bible times used to sleep out with the sheep and protect them. And the same way God is always with us, even though at times we cannot see him and we can't see God, but his presence is always there. And we might feel very alone at times, but we know God is always there. He's always looking out for us. The rest of that verse says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I know the shepherd uses his rod. He's got his rod and his staff. He uses rods, just a big long stick. And he would use that rod to defend the sheep from the attack of others, maybe from mountain lions or bears, something like that. He would use that rod to hit off the lions and hit off the bears and make sure the sheep were safe. And then he would have used the staff to rescue the sheep from trouble. It would have been the crook at the end of the staff. And he would use that crook to grab the sheep and to rescue them from trouble. I know the same way our good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is there to defend us from those who would seek to harm us, especially the devil. He's always out to seek to harm us, but God is there for us. And then he uses his staff to rescue us from trouble and even the trouble of sin. We talked about sin earlier and God is there even to rescue us from sin and to take us away from the trouble of sin. Okay, two more verses to go. Hope you're still with me. So verse five, we read there, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And that reminds us about how the sheep out in the field, they're always there. And they've got lots and lots of lovely grass. And even when there's enemies around, they know the shepherd is there. Again, like we mentioned earlier, to protect them. You know, that reminds us that even as Christians, we can have people around us who might laugh at us. They might mock us. They might call us names. They might be mean to us, but we can still to be happy because we have God. We have God on our side and we have all that we need. So even though people they may laugh at us and mock us and call us names, we can be happy in the presence of our enemies because God is with us. 
Then the rest of that verse says, Thou anointest, thou anointest my head with oil. And that reminds us that we are one of God's children. People who were anointed with oil, they were part of the royal family. And we as Christians, we are part of God's royal family. And we are one of the, sh one of the sheep, one of the fold. We're part of God's royal family. The rest of verse 5 says there, My cup runneth over. And that reminds us of God's blessings to us. We've got our family, we've got our food, we've got clothes, we've got our church, we've got especially our Bibles. We've all of these wonderful things from God. And just in the same way as you pour too much water in a cup, it runs over. We have so many things from God, our cups run over. So many blessings. So the last verse, boys and girls, it tells us there, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And you know, God will always be good to us. He will always show us mercy, even when we disobey him. And just in the same way that the shepherd, if one of his sheep run off or one of them disobey him, the shepherd will always show that sheep mercy. He'll always bring that sheep back into the fold. So God will always show us goodness and show us mercy, even when we disobey him. And you know that then will make us want to treat others the same way, to be good unto others and show mercy unto others. And the very last part of that verse says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We talked about heaven already, boys and girls, but this is showing us here that we will one day dwell with God forever in heaven as one of God's sheep. And we will spend forever in heaven with our great shepherd. We'll dwell in God's house forever. And that's sometimes hard for us to understand, but it's a wonderful thing that we will dwell in God's house in heaven forever with him because he is our good shepherd and we are one of his sheep. So boys and girls, I hope you have enjoyed as we've looked down through Psalm 23. And the next time you go to maybe learn it off by heart or maybe you go and read it through it, you'll understand more of what this Psalm is teaching us, especially for those listening in who are Christians. What is it teaches us about our walk and our relationship with our good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. And even those of you who are listening in and you're not saved, that you'll realize that you need to come and ask the Lord into your heart because he gave his life for you. He died on the cross of Calvary so that you might be saved. So we're gonna finish off now, boys and girls. We were to prayer. So again, fold your arms, bow your heads, close your eyes and come and we'll ask the Lord to help us remember everything that we've learned today. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful psalm that we've learned today and we've read through you today. We thank you, Lord, for all the great lessons, Lord, that are even in those six verses. And we do pray, Lord, that you'd help us remember those things that we have learned today. So be with us now, we pray. For name's sake, we ask these things. Amen. Well, boys and girls, that's us all finished for today. We want to say a big thank you for joining with us and we really hope we had a really good time as we sang our choruses and learnt our memory verse and looked at our story for today. Now, remember that there will be a worksheet that will be available, it'll be up on Facebook for you to download and fill out. I want to see how much of that you can do on our story about Psalm 23 and we hope you have a really good time doing out that worksheet. Now, also remember that if you've missed any of the Bible corners that we have done already, you can go and watch them on Facebook or on YouTube and we hope you have a good time even watching those Bible corners that you might have missed. So until next time boys and girls again if you have any questions for us if you want to get in touch with us about anything leave us a wee comment below or send us a message on messenger and we'll do our best to get back to you especially if you're worried about your salvation please get in touch with us and we'll even show you from God's word how you can be saved. So until next time boys and girls from all the team here at FPC Kids goodbye and God bless. Mm -hmm.